Hi, so I'm expecting, I don't know if this is true, for you to have watched my videos about inheritance and polymorphism before watching this one. It's fine if you didn't. Maybe this will be useful to you. Maybe you already know about inheritance and polymorphism. But I am basically going to take those concepts from those videos and apply it to this example that I did in the last particle system example, um, which had just a single kind of class called particle. And the first thing that I'm going to do, which I think is an interesting thing to think about whether there's a lot of value to this in all of my Nature of Code examples, is add the idea of having particle itself extend p5 dot vector. What does that mean? That means instead of having a separate position variable, the position itself, the vector itself is just the particle, is embedded into the particle object because it's inheriting everything from p5 vector. So I can say super x comma y to create it as a p5 vector at that x, y. Then anywhere that I'm using position, and by the way, I'm not using this edges function, so I'm just going to take it out completely. Anywhere that I'm using position is now just the object itself. This dot add, this dot x, this dot y. Right? So that's it. Now this particle object inherits everything from p5 vector. Next, what would it mean for me to add a class that extends particle? So I'm adding a new JavaScript file called confetti.js and creating a new kind of particle that inherits everything from particle, which inherits everything from p5 vector in, in this class called confetti. And I don't remember exactly what I did as the demonstration of making a new kind of particle in the previous videos, but what I'm going to add here is just this idea of an angle. And I'm going to make it a random angle between 0 and 2 pi. Then I'm going to override the show function. I've written a new show function that just draws this confetti particle a different way. So the way it updates itself, all the other things that it does, the physics of it are entirely the same. From the particle class, I'm inheriting the finished function, the apply force function, the update function. I just don't want to draw it as a plain old ellipse. I'm just rewriting the show function. And of course, once again, I've forgotten this dot. Let me catch that error first. This dot angle. And you might say like, well, where is this dot lifetime? And where is this dot r? All of those properties are inherited, once again, from the particle class itself. Oh, I've just got some characters out of order here. Particle is not defined. Oh, interesting. I didn't think of this. The confetti class is extending particle, but doesn't seem to know what a particle is. Why is that? I think this is one of those rare occasions where the order of these JavaScript files embedded into the index.html really matters. The confetti.js file is included first, but it, confetti is based on particle, so I think particle has to be here. And I think just conceptually, it might make sense for me to say particle, confetti, emitter, sketch. All right, the sketch is still running, but I don't see anything different. I just see all of my plain particles. If I look at the emitter class, I'll see that the only thing I'm ever adding to the array are particle objects. Let's try changing those to confetti objects. There we go. It might be hard to tell exactly here, but those are little squares that are rotated. Let's make them a little bit bigger and add just one per frame. And now I think that's more obvious visually for you to see that those are squares and not circles. What if I want to have both? Well, now I have to ask myself the question, what is the logic behind why I might want to have one or the other? Is it just randomly both of them? Maybe I'll just start there. Now I've added some code. Pick a random number between 0 and 1. If it's less than 0.5, add a particle object. If it's greater than 0.5, add a confetti object. So there's a, I'm flipping a coin, particle or confetti. And hopefully you can see now that both kinds of particles are included. So I might, this begs the question, you know, what's a good exercise for you to try? Well, first of all, maybe add a third class that extends particle to this. Think about how that particle is different. Maybe you might come up with a different, more intentional logic behind why you might pick one kind of particle versus another. But I do want to address something here which I, I think is really an important question. When do you want to have another class that extends a class versus just add something that's like a twist 
on the original class. For example, if what I wanted to have now is particles of a different color, I probably wouldn't write a whole class called color particle. I might just add to my particle.js file a variable like this.color. But again, there's no right or wrong answers to these questions. But to me, the fact that there, I wanted to override an entire function, the entire way that it's drawn using a different shape entirely, that made sense for me to create a new class that extended particle rather than have some kind of if statement of if it's this type, draw a circle, otherwise else, draw a square. So that's the way I'm thinking about it right now. I wonder how you're thinking about it. Definitely would love to hear your feedback in the comments. But this, is, this really wraps up up this exploration of the concepts of inheritance and polymorphism with uh, particles systems in chapter four of Nature of Code. I've got one more thing that I want to look at with particle systems, and that's a little bit more about how you might choose to render a particle. What does it mean to have the particle rendered as an image texture, as well as explore different blend modes in P5.js? What kinds of visual effects can you create that way? So that'll be in the next video.